<laughs> we have now the MVP of the week, which is brought to you by nobody. And my MVP of the week, I'll give you first, is a guy who some of you may be saying, finally, it's about damn time. Because uh, this guy, it's been a struggle. We've talked about him. It's been a struggle to start the season, but not the last week. 448 on base. Only at one homer, but eight RBIs, five on scored, and five stolen bases. Julio Rodriguez. I was, um, yeah, dude showed up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, hopefully that Seattle team can turn around because baseball is much more fun when that division is clicking on all cylinders. Looks like Houston's starting to pick it up, right? Bregman, yeah, the guy we yep, talked about, yep. he's starting uh-huh. to pick it up a little bit. We knew that was coming. Um, my MVP of the week is a guy who may even be available in some of your leagues. He's rostered in 66%. He's not available in any of mine, unfortunately. I actually own one of him, one share of him. I don't own him. Um, and he is the third base slash kind center of got fielder. rid of that like 100 years ago. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah. He is the third baseman slash center fielder for the Detroit Tigers, and he is the only guy who has been hitting for that team, um, and that is Matt Vierling. Um, so I had just mentioned Cooper Criswell. Uh, his last start was against Detroit. And Matt Vierling was the only guy who hit against Chris Well. He hit a home run and a double and just looked phenomenal. And since last Sunday, he has been red hot, Vierling has. Um, I picked him 15. up, by the way. Did you? Nice. That's a good yeah. pickup. I yeah. mean, he's been that good. He he was on my list because he was that good, yes. Yeah, yeah. 14 for 32, 437 mm-hmm. batting average, four home runs and nine RBIs in the last week. Um, I will say the home runs and RBIs were just from a three-game stretch, right? So – you know, accumulates two home runs, one home run and one home run, but either way, he was still hitting all week. So it's a very impressive week for um, a guy who he really had to earn his playing time, right? He wasn't guaranteed a spot um, out of spring training and he has uh, certainly looked, looked the part. looks like the Tigers well, are going to run with him. So we've talked so much about a lot of those Tigers that we were looking forward to early in the year, mm-hmm. not living up to what okay. they were supposed to do. And so here's a guy who's like, hey, I'm going to take the opportunity and run with it, right? Like, yeah, he's vet, if everyone yeah. else is not going to step up, there's young guys. No one has a guaranteed spot on it. It's not like, oh, this is a set team. And, you know, like yeah. Jason Dominguez hit another two home runs in yeah. in, in AAA or AA. And it's like, my God, what, what's happening? But, yeah, he's not going to come up because guess what? Him? There's Where are you going to put him? Standing still healthy and hitting well. Obviously, Verdugo's hitting well. Soto and Judge are abnormal. Um, I did want to read this. Let me find this. Uh, these judge stats just oh, real it's quick. ridiculous i think he's got a wrc plus of 100 higher than anyone else in the this majors was, over the last this month. 25 Thanks. 25 game stretch at the end to end like nay i think this was uh yes this was tweeted out last night june 1st so the last 25 games prior to today uh was 15 home runs 12 doubles and 20 walks in 25 games Yankees in a 25 game span with 15 plus homers, 10 plus doubles, and 20 plus walks. Aaron Judge in 2024 and Babe Ruth in 1921. Like insane. And then he comes up today and just makes it look so easy after Soto hits the first inning home run, first pitch, just lines a single the other way, and just, and then steals two bases today. Like it wasn't enough. He had to steal two bases because baseball is boring for him at this point. Hitting home runs is too easy. So let me hit singles and then steal bases. Because I'm six seven and three hundred pounds, and I can run like the wind. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, I mean, I saw a tweet. I forget who tweeted it, so I'm sorry for taking it. Just the idea, but someone said, right? If there was a league higher than Major League Baseball, these guys would be called up there right now. Like that's how good they've been. They are just, they make it look too easy. It's it's too. They've easy. they've been at a level that it doesn't. It's that you don't see. You know what I mean? Both yeah. him and Soto. You don't see players. That's why. That's what it means. Like when you see a guy in triple a it's like okay he should be a major leaguer he's too good for triple a when you see guys who are performing at this level at the major league level it's like yeah maybe they're too good for this league <laughs> like it's crazy yeah all right you ready for our locks of the week i am are you all right yeah you can kick us off i already threw this guy into my starting lineup for our weekly league mm-hmm. and um he doesn't have any numbers really so far to speak of this year but he's coming back He's finally here. He's back. His name is Royce Lewis, third base oh, yeah. for the Minnesota you love that guy. <laughs> I love this guy. Um, yeah, he's a lock in all of my lineups. I don't care about the injury risk. Um, if you have a weekly league, you have to throw him in there. He's too good to leave out. Um, and so he is my lock of the week, short and sweet, because, um, again, he doesn't have any numbers, but he's an absolute unit. So throw Royce Lewis in your lineups. 
real quick, I did want to give the Jose Siri numbers because I didn't give them sure. earlier. Um, he's seven for his last 21 with an OBP over 400. We like to see two that. homers, three RBIs, five, uh, seven RBIs, three runs scored in the stolen base. So he's been, he's been really good over the last week or so. So Jose Siri just, just wanted to give the numbers there yeah. properly. And then sure. my lock of the week is the guy you mentioned. The team's coming on. He's coming on over his last, he had a homer today and two RBIs. There's two for four. He had three homers coming into this, into today, prior in the week. Also on base, close to 400. He's starting to get hot. Alex Bregman. He is, I promise you, next week, I'm going to have him as my MVP of the week for this past week. They're playing against, um, I know later in the week, they're playing against uh, against uh, the Angels, I think. Um, who are they playing sooner? Let me look that up real quick, unless you get it first. I, but, I had it right here. Cardinals. They face yeah, Kyle Gibson the, on Monday. Yep. Right. The Cardinals, not the greatest team in the world. And then they're playing against the Angels. Like they get up for those divisional games. I think it's the Angels, it's either the Angels or or Seattle. I'm pretty sure it's the Angels, though. Um, so I, I like where Houston's at right now. I think Houston's about to get hot. And we talked about the division earlier. When if Seattle's getting good, even the Angels, if they can just hang in there, Kevin Pillar, carry the Angels. Why not? <laughs> but Texas should be better than they are. And Corey Seeger had another great week. Um, so if you're looking at Texas, you're looking at the angels and you're looking at Seattle all as the summer gets going first week of June, they start to get hot. That could be really fun. And I could see Alex Bregman turning it on along with the rest of that roster. I mean, Kyle Tucker, we don't talk about him enough, how good he's been. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it feels like Jordan has been maybe a little bit of a disappointment relatively to what he, he, you know, you expect from him, but he's having a great season. Um, and I feel like that, that team can really get going and, you know, do what they're what we expect them to do all summer. So Alex Bregman's going to be right in the middle of that if they do do that. Yeah, and when it comes time for the playoffs and the the Astros are right back in it, and people are like, "What happened? They were so bad to start the year." This is how this team operates. They're they're not never out of it. So um, yeah, Bregman, like you said, has been hot. Love to see it. It's a long season. Like some teams need to start hot. Like the Yankees coming off of the year they had last year, yes. you have to get off to that hot start. It's imperative. You know, the way the Orioles fizzled at the end of the last year in the playoffs, it's like imperative you get off to a hot start. The Astros, it's like, nah, we've been there, done that. We know what it's like. We know that over 162, like somebody was saying regarding the Mets, like, there's 107 games left to the season. Like, stop. Like, like the Mets who have been as sad as it's been, like get off the deck. And, and I don't believe they will because I think their management, and not their management, but their leadership on the team, sure. specifically the top players, Lindor and Alonzo and McNeil are, are rotten. That's personally my opinion until they trade those guys. I mean, Lindor's not going anywhere, but Pete and, and McNeil, you're not going anywhere. But if you had the right leadership, you said, all right, it's been a third of the season. It's not been great. We're one six game winning streak away from being right back in this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the, the, the wild card, everyone makes a freaking wild card this year. Like, I don't know. But so a team like yeah. Houston, they're going to look at that and say, hey, we're right in this. Let's let's currently go. currently only four and a half out from the uh, the wild card. Uh, the Mets. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. My point. Like you're you're right there. And to act like in June, the first week of June, the first couple of days of June, your season's over because you've had some tough losses like grow up you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's like stopping a baby and you know when the second half of the season comes and if one team gets hot you forget about it right like it doesn't yeah. none of it matters it doesn't you know? matter it, doesn't yeah. matter. it and, really doesn't and even that think about the texas rangers now i know it's a little bit different because they were so good but the texas rangers i think lost 10 of 16 games between the end of august and early september last year they were playing really bad baseball and it was like oh god the te- here come the astros they're gonna yeah. take over and and then the Rangers went on a run in the World Series. Like, it, it, it's baseball. It's a long season. You're going to have your ups and downs. You can't let it linger. By the way, same thing for fantasy baseball. Like, you're going to have yeah. some tough stretches. And I know it, with head-to-head, it's rough because it feels like, oh, man, you're just plummeting in the standings. I don't know. Go seven and three for three straight weeks. And all of a sudden, you're right back in it. You know? Yeah. You're probably close I mean, to the top of your standings. Well, and that's, you know, I, I actually kind of did want to bring it up. I'm happy that you you kind of brought it here because – we haven't really talked much about our league and that's because it, we haven't been doing well. Like and no. the, the reason though, that I I'm going to bring it up now is because I'm scheduled to go eight and one this week and or eight, one and one. And Rami, you look like you're six, three and one. 
that's going to take us. I'm I'm only where is it right here? I'm you're eight the only one worse than me in the league. <laughs> I'm eight games out of the playoffs, and we're a third of the way through or halfway through yeah. the season. Not even, yeah. like, you know. So it's like yeah. a couple hot weeks, and you're right. There. Like you're going to be one of the top teams. Like it really. And don't be that loser, by the way. Don't be that guy in your league who, even if you think like, oh, it's been a rough start, don't give up. You make yeah. it fun for everyone else by yeah. continuing to play and continuing to set your lineup and continuing to put out your best team. So and make trades and try and better your team and go through the wave wires. Because that, you know, that makes it fun for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Be and good league mate. You're going to, you're going to surprise yourself. You really are. I like, think so. It exactly. happens all the time. It happens all the time. All right. So that's going to do it for us. A little pep talk from the boys going into a week. I love it <laughs> going into the week. So uh, I'm going to go take like a quick nap and then I got to be in the city at 5 a.m. So uh, until next time. Yeah. I'm in Baltimore now. Got to be back in New York in like too few hours <laughs> yeah Jeez. all right yeah so until yeah. next time like subscribe share the podcast thank you to everyone who helps out on the show uh both on the mm-hmm. show and behind the scenes see ya yeah thanks <laughs>